the python hunters are in the Amazon. Holy crap. <laughs> off road and off the map. I thought I had a nice backyard. In a region crawling with deadly reptiles. Shishupe, Shishupe, hey, Bushy. Right here, look at that. Bushmaster, the world's largest pit viper. Woo! <laughs> nice spec. Their mission, find the mysterious Blackwater Lake. They protect this lake, they don't want anybody here. And catch the world's largest snake, the anaconda. It's time to get more remote, more wild. They're on a global mission to protect the planet's snakes and other reptiles. Biologist, venomous snake expert, and croc specialist, Sean Heflick. Ever since I was young, I've been mesmerized by reptiles. Law enforcement officer and reptile breeder, Greg Graziani. I'm committed to the education and conservation of reptiles. And designer reptile breeder, Michael Cole. I've been handling snakes since I was four, but I have a special passion for pythons. Fighting the fear of the fang. They are the Python Hunters. Sean. Yes, we are, we are on the way to his place. He's got 27 hectares, and his place is located right inside one of the most important reserves that we have in this region. How much further is it? It's about 15 more minutes from here. Okay. Oh, so we're not riding in this all over. No, no, no. We're not, we're not going to go on this one. This works for, for Peruvians, but I'm a little big for this. Yeah. Greg and Michael are about to meet Sean at his home away from home for over 15 years. <laughs> Welcome, boys. Welcome. Good, man. You got him here safe? Yeah, <laughs> right. no problem. Well, I uh, I figured you wouldn't be uh, overly comfortable in that chariot, so I got you another one. Yeah, yeah I was under the impression from this point we're going to have to hike into your place, so uh, now we got a, an easy ride here, huh? You know, I was under that impression, too, but this is a new road. I've never seen it. What are you? Jesus. This is not a freaking road. Uh, hang on to your britches on this one. Yeah. They're heading deep into the Amazon to wrangle scores of venomous snakes and caiman, and lay their hands on the greatest challenge of all, the green anaconda. But first, a visit to Sean's jungle hideaway. Uh, You're not supposed to drive vehicles on this. Holy, you said this is a road. It looks more like this is still a path to me. You're driving up on the side of the hill. We gotta go the rest on foot here, boy. Well, I tell you, I'm happy to hike. Yeah, I'm After really that, good with that. What's your, your butt sore? Huh? Your butt sore? My butt, my back, my neck, the top of my head as many times as I hit that roof. Yeah, I was gonna say, the only thing that bothered me was oh, yeah? the roof. Wait, uh, wait till we get on the boat to make it to the lake. <laughs> then you'll see how sore your butt's gonna be. You know, the boys haven't traveled abroad, and certainly not into the jungles like the Amazon. So it's going to be interesting to see how they cope. We're going pretty remote, pretty basic. You coming, rolling? Yep. Hey, boys, this is where uh, my land starts right here. And you've got about a three-mile trek or so through, uh, through the jungle to uh, the Heflick Palace. Sean's land borders one of Peru's most pristine habitats. Man, Sean, this is your backyard here in Peru. Not too bad, huh? I thought I had a nice backyard. If I told you what I paid for the 65 acres, you'd probably uh, inject me in the juggler with venom to get it. <laughs> so what should we be looking for in this area on the way? Well, you know, you notice the topography and that we just drove through and come over? This is high forest. So bushies, bushmasters, are real plentiful on my land. It's one of the, one of the reasons uh, that I bought it. But a uh, lot of mammals, a lot of bird species. And when you get into low-lying areas, like up there, you can just barely see we're coming into it. There's a little stream. There are poison dart frogs. So watch the leaf litter. If you, if you think you see something, boop, you know, you probably did. Sean, you sure this is the way back? I ain't never been lost in the jungle. Well, I didn't say you've ever been lost. But it seems you know how to find the most difficult route. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is 
I'm headed this way, guys. Is that? Yeah, yeah this is great. Be careful. This is uh, bushy paradise, so watch out. They are no joke, and it's getting a little darker, so we'll be out and about soon. If you find a snake, just, just tell me. OK, OK, I'll do that. Yeah. The bushies is pretty much totally terrestrial. Yeah, the, uh, the bushies tend to like a little higher elevation. They don't really, I don't find them in too many places where they're, you know, in the swamp, in the muck. Um, they'll pass through it, but they like to kind of hold high and dry. And... Ow. Not to mention. And it's Shishupe, like... Shishupe, hey, bushy. You got him. Where right, at? Right here, look at this. That's a, That's big, a big animal. animal. This animal is huge. Bad bites, bad venom, really toxic. So Where is Right here, and he's posted Holy up. Holy crap. He's posted up. He was moving, and when I stepped up on him, he drew back really quick. That's <laughs> freaking huge. Bushmasters are not only a fast striking snake, they are a fast moving viper. A snake that size, Sean, how big is his, his strike radius from there? A snake this size, when he is Look jacked up, ready to go, is a five foot plus strike if he wants to be. These are launchers, and the worst thing about them is they can move like lightning on the ground when they want to, and they just jack back and strike so fast that if you take a bite, you're definitely seeking medical attention. Bushmaster. They're the world's largest pit viper. It's still daytime. When night falls, this becomes a whole different beast. Magnificent. This two and a quarter meter snake poses a real danger to unsuspecting humans as it lies camouflaged, waiting for rodents. I'm gonna gently get him on these tongs. Watch that hand here within range. I'm good, bad boy. A little bit of scar on him, you know. He's he's had some battles with something out here. Wow. We don't want to stress this guy. Crossing behind you. I've never held a venomous snake this heavy body. Hey Greg, how's that feel? Oh, this is incredible, man. This is uh, just an incredible trip to get out here in the Amazon, see these animals in their natural environment. I mean, look at this, the world's largest pit viper sitting here in Sean's backyard. Tell me that ain't bad. Huh? <laughs> 25 minutes, maybe 30 minutes on my property. Sean, I think we've got a Heflick meter right here of uh, probably uh, nine out of 10 so far. I mean, uh, ding, 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 ding. Boom. You always busted my chops about all my stories in the Amazon around the world. And now, now you're going to have people haven't seen the pictures. You know what the difference is? And they're, they're going to give you hell. But you know what the difference is? I'm on TV with this. I got <laughs> <laughs> Is this typical? I mean, how often do you go out and find something like this? This is probably, without laying a tape on him, the largest Bushmaster I found on this property. So. You know, you guys, uh, you guys are in for just more for than one treat, baby. This, this is. Uh, We're here for a record. Is a holy grail. I'm watching Greg and Sean handle this giant bushmaster. I'm thinking to myself, Michael, if you don't say something, you'll never get an opportunity to handle a snake like this again. He's calm. I want, I want to hold his tail for one picture. All right. So, I got his upper body. You make sure you got him by the tail. You come in on this side. I'm going to go out left. I got the hook. And right. you're not you're not grabbing him with a hook. Grab him a little higher than mine. You're hand. using that fork, just just go. to gently manipulate his upper body. All right. You ready? I'm gonna let go, and he's all yours. I've got this side he's on good. you. He's going away. He's going away from you. The you more sure? relaxed you are, the more relaxed he is. All right, man. No problem. If this behemoth bites Michael and he's not treated quickly, the hemotoxic venom could cause massive tissue damage or even kill him. This is a chance of a lifetime here, Michael. Oh, oh, oh. One more. Pull his head around. Right. Great shot, Mikey. All right. Now we got to got to let my little beastie go. Uh, we'll see you later. Watch him dissolve into that jungle. Man, it's going to be hard to top that one. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I got, I got my work cut out for me. Yes, sir, it hey. is. <laughs> good job, man. Wow, I'm sweating. All right, you did good. You did good. Thank you. You're not getting better than that right there. Thank you. Man. In the Amazon Basin? Thank you. That's the beast.
Sean's property lives up to their expectations until they see the accommodations. That is my bungalow palace. Holy cow. It wow, opens. man, look at that. Dips on this hammock. <laughs> <laughs> you said bungalow. If they're seeing the houses and stuff coming in here, I'm thinking maybe a third of this. Yeah, this is my little place. This is a freaking palace. Now, this is perfect right here. Look at this hammock right here. I, I think we wore Greg out on the adventure. <laughs> in the event somebody hollers snake, I'm right here by the entrance, got my pack ready to go. I'm like the uh, Peruvian SRT snake team, man. I'm out the door. <laughs> this is perfect spot. So what do you think? Can't beat the view. Oh, I can beat the view. Come upstairs. That's where I was headed. You know, I built this thing 10 years ago with the help from the local people. And we used all local timbers, trees that had been blown over by a huge storm. I'm proud of that. So you got a great little house. You got your own garden. You got a little outhouse. Reptiles all around. What more does a man need? I love it. Freaking love it. Ah, let's get our sleep, boys. Tomorrow, you're gonna need all your strength. You got a big day planned before we head out on the mighty Amazon River. The guys have plenty to do before their five-day trek into the Amazon for Anaconda. But first, it's off to a Venom Lab for a little hands-on training. These guys are loose. Oh, be careful. Holy yeah, it's just a Bushmaster just loose on the floor. Are you serious? That's a big Bushmaster. Yeah. A good idea just to know where they're at. Allowing venomous Bushmasters to roam the Venom Lab yeah, how many, is how many? not standard procedure. <laughs> he just lets them run wild in here? Because they want a cage and they need to be, they need to have less stress. Yeah. And how many are in here? One, two, three, three. Three, only three. Three, three are loose in here. So we got all three located, one by the door, one here, one there, so we're good. Yeah. Fellas, today I'm gonna get you up close and personal to the viper that bit me here years ago in Peru. I'm gonna show you the carnage that this venom does inside the human body. There are two species of what's called lion's heads that, that people kind of call fair to land. Uh, and, and the one is Asper and the other is Aatrox. Is Aatrox what you got bit by? Aatrox is what I got bit by. Uh, both of them, make no mistake, both of them are bad bites. Yeah. Um, you know, they both kill a lot of people in Latin America. Do you remember was... this, Roland? Oh, yeah. Right. Wow. Oh, he was almost dying after being bitten by this one. You know, it was my fault. As I released it, hit that left fang buried in my finger, and the right fang buried in my finger, and I felt the venom. It just felt like fire in my system. Uh, the pain was, was excruciating. My hand was just crazy swollen. My fingers were like sausages, and it worked all the way up into my arm, up into my neck. My armpit and arm were just black, black as your hat. You know, I got pretty lucky. I just want to let you know, I'm going to do my best to make sure you never have the opportunity to tote around photos like this of me. I hope you do. <laughs> I want to draw some of my own blood, and I want to extract some of the venom from this animal, and I want you to see the carnage that, that happens when the venom of a fair to lance comes in contact with, with human blood and human tissue. The only person working this snake right now is me. You can get uh, from the other side. You know, every time we're around venomous animals, we need to review the safety protocols. The one time you don't, the one time you get complacent, that's when a serious accident's gonna happen. Don't reach over. Thank you. What you gonna give me, buddy? Hmm? Huh? Like playing with deadly spaghetti. Just a hook. Just a hook. You grab the body? Nope. 
They've got some long fangs. I tell you, these things are are really straight. You almost take from their name, lance heads. Their uh, their fangs are, are lance like as well. Long hypodermic needles. Yeah, I mean they are straight and they are long. A little bit, there's one. Yeah. Come on, boy. Give me a little. Give me a little. You see that going down into the vial? There's enough deadly venom in one Fair de Lance bite to kill several people. It's enough to ruin your day right there. Just this small amount can kill a full grown human. So it's it's nothing to nothing to mess with, you know, it, it's some hot stuff. Now step two of the experiment, drawing Sean's blood. Don't ever look at me and smile when you're doing that. <laughs> you know, as a former paramedic, I'm kind of in a catch-22 here, because if I miss Sean's vein, then I don't look like I know what I'm doing. But I really want to stick him a couple of times. Do I get orange juice and cookies afterwards? <laughs> That's good right there. Yeah. We'll extract the venom out of here and introduce it into the blood and watch the carnage. You ready? Yeah. See it coagulating, settling on the side of the on the side of the vial. That venom is starting to just catalyze, it's starting to destroy the red blood cells and, and the blood tissues. As I turn it sideways in the vial, it just stays there like a jello. Dump a little bit out on here and see what we, uh... <laughs> Look at that. There you go. Look at that. Look at the jello and the clotting. That's it. We're at three minutes here. And that, you know, when that happens in your system, the blood can't pump. You know, it really just brings it back home about, you know, you guys here with me and, and just how careful we need to be. Wow. Sean's done a great job of preparing us for this trip, but I got to tell you, when we get up the Amazon, one of the things I really want to see is a giant anaconda. But first, there's a spot where they know they can get their hands on one. This is it, boy. Keys to Coach Zoo. I think you're going to like it. Yeah, we're gonna get close. There's a there's a massive female in here in the water. That uh, the big one's head's right there. Hey guys, come here, come here, come here. What you got? Is the bulldog of large boids. This is an animal that amazes me because when the opportunity arises this guy will take down a caiman you know an apex predator i have no idea what the temperament is on this animal but let's find out we'll see what happens okay so i'm gonna see if we can do this gently and if this animal will participate without getting us a mortal combat or testicle biting or anything like that so let's see what we got that is about There's only one way to size up a green anaconda. Lay your hands on it. If you get a hold of a giant anaconda, you better be on your game, because this is a big snake that just wants to get his teeth into you. Massive, massive jaw muscle. Yeah, if that clamps down on you, that's pain. The, the eye positions on the top of the head for you know, the, the aquatic environment that it lives in and it hunts in. Like a bulldog, when that thing locks on, gets cinched down with those recurved teeth, and boom, I game know, on. Fish and a lot of the other prey. A lot of the other stuff around here is slippery and fast, so when they grab a hold of something, they better have a good grip, and that's that's how they get it. They mean business. There we go. <laughs> There's the mouth shot right there. Thanks for that. Hey, hey I do what I can. You sure you don't want there this in? Hang on to that. Mike, or Greg wants this in. Greg wants this in. Look at those teeth. Look at the, look at the jaw. 
The only problem is this. This anaconda is four and a quarter meters long and weighs almost 46 kilos, but they can grow much larger. I can't wait to find one of these bad boys in the wild. Early Amazon explorers reported seeing anacondas over 30 meters long. To this day, stories still emerge of such giants lurking in the jungles. Get that head around far enough to get a hold of your wrist. That's pain. 100 plus recurved, sharp as needle. When they set into flesh, it's on and over. The biggest problem is, is your first reaction is to pull away. And that's the worst thing you can do because when you do, you're headed out to the hospital for stitches. And that, boys, is one of the number one reasons we're heading deep into the Amazon. So you can lay your hands on one of those in the wild. There's only one way to make the trip to Blackwater Lake's legendary anacondas in a live aboard riverboat. There's the Amazon right there, boy. Oh, that's oh, beautiful. Yeah. Want to go down this road too fast, you're right in the water. When's our uh, boat going to get here? It's here. What do you mean it's here? There she is. Are you kidding me? That's not going to make it. <laughs> That'll make it? Who's looking at us? That's because we're late. What do you think? You guys were going to get Shangri-La on water? There's kids in the crew. The families, Latin America, they do everything together. All right, let's go load up. Okay. You know, I know Sean likes to rough it, but I'm not spending five days cramped up with him in a boat. This is a transport boat. So the family or people? Or well, they rent they're going somewhere. Yeah, people people yeah. rent this boat, plus they transport their own wares, you know? They There's come here to the market, that. buy all that stuff, and take it back to the village. You gotta be out of your mind. It's not when that bad. I... So you gotta be kidding me, man. I never met this guy before in my life. And he's playing along with you. <laughs> you don't even have to. Gracias. <laughs> that's, Gracias. that's the beauty of the Amazon. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> plays along. <laughs> what are they? Come on, let's go see. Is that more like it? That's way more like it. Y'all know me better than that. This is my backyard. You know me. I'm gonna do it right. Yeah, yeah that might you. be a little bit, uh, you know, you go from one extreme to the other here. That might be a little bit too fancy. So, so now you think I'm lying about this? Yeah. <laughs> I like this riverboat. A little bit of luxury on the Amazon. Something tells me I better enjoy it now, because it's going to get a lot rougher later. I can deal with this. The guys finally rendezvous with their riverboat for the perilous 800-kilometer journey to remote Blackwater Lake. Every time I'm back in the Amazon, it's just something, I know it's just something raw and powerful and, and beautiful about it. It's, it's like my second home. We're going to hit this remote lake I found years ago, and it's bang up with black caiman, spectacle caiman, anaconda, piranhas like this. You got a lot of weight on your shoulders right now. Good. We've had a lot of, a lot of good guides in the past. <laughs> we'll see how good you are. That's right. This is farther out than most people venture. I didn't come here to do what everybody else does. In the Amazon Basin, it's truly one of the last places on this planet where we haven't explored at all. There are remote areas no Westerner, no white man has ever set foot on. Let's load. Every time I come up this river, I've got to stop by the Bora village. You know, I've known them for a decade and a half. And uh, they're like a second family to me. Hola. Que tal? Muchos días, ¿no? Ya. Hola, hola, hoy. Muy bien, ¿qué tal? So this is a welcome drink that they they yeah. prepare for us. Right, you get it. Yeah, and it, it, it just takes some of it. It's rude not to not to take some. 
<laughs> Hola, que tal? Mucho tiempo, no? That drink, yeah. that welcome drink, is, is prepared um, using part of what they use as yuca, and they chew it up. The old women, I the old women, you were gonna say they that. chew it up in their mouth, I and then they spit it. Knew it that's chew what it was. Spit it, and then they add just a little bit of like sugar cane. He said they boil it, and then they, and then it ferments. So it, yeah, that's what they well, said. Yeah, they said they boil it, but uh, but a lot of times they just leave it ferment, and the alcohol kills all the stuff. So you guys just made out with with your tongues with all the old women. <laughs> Now that's a welcome. Thank God. None of the men contributed. Is it really spit in there? I guess so. <laughs> but you know what? It tasted just like that. Like old no, women? No, <laughs> like, like spit. How do you know what like old women's spit, spit tastes like? The Bora have survived war and slavery. Now, they're protected by the Peruvian government and, they believe, also by the spirit of anaconda. The big snake for Oh, well, this is a ritual that their ancestors used to do. Para poder nombrar un nuevo jefe. To name a new chief. We also ask, we also ask the anaconda spirit so we can get water because during the dry season, there's no water here and they ask the anaconda. So the anaconda can send them water. When you say anaconda or you say Bora Negra or you say Yaco Mama, they fear it, but they also revere it. You know, and they realize that that power comes from nature, you know, and, and it's intertwined in their culture. If, if we could be so bold to ask them um, if, if they could perform the Yakumama or the, the Anaconda dance of welcome for us? Claro, sí. Whistle, Michael, I can't whistle. <laughs> Another Bora ritual is consuming ground coca leaves to heighten their awareness. So this gives them energy. Uh, so they're not sleepy, so they're energetic and, and awake. The more they eat, the more energy they it's like get. Each one's got to take more than the last. If the last guy's just coming back. <laughs> so like tobacco kind of. <laughs> one catch. They're not allowed to smile while consuming it. <clears throat> you all right? It's, I got some of the dry powder down in the back base of my throat, and it, it's, it's kind of burning, but it's slowly going away. I, I will give you credit. I thought that you were going to cough that up and vomit. I mean, your eyes watered up. Oh, yeah. Your face turned around. I can tell you were choking a little bit. I, couldn't I, breathe. Was, I couldn't breathe. Yeah. I knew I couldn't <clears throat> breathe in because it would go farther, <clears throat> and I knew I needed to bring saliva up. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was, it was rough. This coca powder that they give you is supposed to give you a nice little buzz. I didn't even get to enjoy it because I stuck it down my throat the wrong way. Just about choked me to death. Yeah. It even it, I, I think somebody. I, it was kind of like in haze for a second. Mm. But it's like a, it's a low, it's a low grade um, heightening of awareness. Hasta luego, no. Hasta pronto. Yeah, hermano. It's harder to get any wild than this. Yeah, that's for sure. The people, the place, the animals, the wildlife. Now you see why for 15 years I've been coming here and this is like my second home. It, it's real easy to get hooked and uh, yeah, I love this place. I can't wait to bring my family down here someday to meet some of these people. They're just wonderful.
For the next three days, the Python hunters likely won't encounter another living soul en route to the mysterious Blackwater Lake. It's time to get more remote, more wild. But plans in the Amazon have a way of coming undone. Hey guys, what's going on? We ran aground at a couple of sandbars. They're having a, having a hard time finding the channel through here at night. They put this small launch out. He's got a big long dipstick, and they're trying to trying to feel their way Pulling through. Pulling along. Yeah. How uh, much of a damper is this going to be on our schedule? I guess it depends on how long it takes to find the channel. This boat's not going anywhere. So the guys do what they do best. Check out the local wildlife. This area is full of black and spectacled caimans. And uh, the blacks get huge. Every now and then, uh, they'll, uh, they'll take a local. So keep your eyes open. And remember, the size of that eye shine can be deceptive. So watch what you're grabbing. See you, Mikey? I see him. Get it, get it, get it. Get it, get it! Got him. <laughs> nice, Whoa. nice spec. Oh yeah, nice snag. See that brow ridge right there? It makes it a spectacle. They have this spectacle ridge right here. The spectacles are the most predominant with that ridge, so that's that's how they got their name. You want a section before we drop them? Yeah. You know, it doesn't hurt the animal when we do the finger probes to determine the sex, but it's a valuable piece of data to give us a better idea of the overall health of the population. The male. It's time for him to go. Give him a gentle uh, farewell. There's another one over in here. Just Looks a Yeah, right oh, there. light right there. Oh, yeah. Let's go cruise, cruise, cruise in there. Here, Sean. Get, get. I see him. I see him. Give me that one. You got to grab him, Mike. Straight ahead. You got him? Tell me when you want the light off. I got him. Tiny speck. Oh, he got me, too. Did he get you? <laughs> oh. Oh, I want a mama. Oh. These guys are a little, cool. a little feisty now. These huh? guys are a little feisty. Here, grab this little get sex. Let these little guys go quick. You know, life can't get much better than this. I'm out here in the Amazon with my buds, and my horizons are just expanding by leaps and bounds with every moment. This guy's got a little more attitude. Oh, this guy's male. He just showed it. That's a yeah, male. Yeah, it's a male. He showed Two it males. Too. Back in the water, both y'all. So you double release. There we go. The race is on. Watch. <laughs> Zoom. I think the little one's got to go slowly. That big one's like, I'm going. You've definitely got a healthy population here, man. By sunrise, they free their boat from the sandbar but they still have a full day of travel ahead of them before reaching the anacondas at Blackwater Lake. We're a long way from, from civilization. This Blackwater Lake that I'm taking you to is magnificent. When, when I found it the first time I went there, I was just floored. I was probably the first white individual ever to go into it. It is three or four hours minimum by motorboat up this winding jungle stream into this black water lake that is teeming with black caiman, anaconda, fair to land, more bird life than you can shake a stick at. This is true wilderness. But true wilderness is becoming harder and harder to find on the Amazon. That one's broken loose. That's illegal logging right there. No tag on it, nothing. I tell you, all these trees and logs and just massive amounts of debris, they mess a boat up. Even, even a vessel this size 
The Amazon River devours a lot of vessels. I see why. I guess the good news is, is there's enough stuff floating in it if the boats go down, something to grab onto. But the bad news is, where there are logs, there are people. I've never seen this many fishermen. I hear the sound of progress. I hear chainsaw. Yeah. It's never good. Those are like uh, tribal fishermen? They're Peruvians. And these are what they call river people. So they live in small villages uh, along the rivers. They use it for their highways. They raise a little bit of crops, right. and they fish. When they finally reach the river people's home base, it's a shock. This village is huge compared to what it used to be. It's like right out of the Wild West. We're only several hours from a tributary. But with this many people, I'm a little concerned what we're going to find. We're going remote. This is farther out than most people venture. It's time to leave the comfort and safety of their riverboat. That little skiff is going to tear you up. We're going to be on it for about four hours getting to the lake. But uh, that's the price you pay for getting out in the, in the true wilderness. Gracias. Hasta luego, no? This is the yellow-headed caracara right down by the water's edge. There's a legend here of the Yakumama, this giant black anaconda that's so big, she has earth and trees growing off of her back. And you know, when you're this remote, when you're this wild, it's easy to see how these legends get started. So we're going up this tributary in the middle of nowhere, come around a corner, and there's a tree block in the river the size of a small car. And getting across means getting in. We're in the water here in the Amazon. There's piranha all over the place. He's got to give that thing all the gas he can. Everybody's got to be seated. We're already five hours into a three-hour trip up this tributary. And I keep thinking to myself, what if the next tree's even bigger and we can't pass it? Go. Yeah, I'm gonna need a nap by the time we get to the lake. This current is a lot stronger than it looks. It's, uh, it's like swimming in a lap pool. But they're not out of the water yet. You just come down on here. And then we'll just tie you up. Top of squad. Watch where you step. Well, step back, because it doesn't look like I'm grabbing it. Well, if I step back, it's going to run step the thing. Back, just grab the thing. Grab I can't still not that right where I'm at. This is fun. <laughs> There's a little bit of fat goes a long way. Look, he's so proud. He didn't do anything but eat more <laughs> supper than the rest of us. Hey, you got to get fame and fortune somehow.
You know, there's a lot of dangers out here besides what we're physically laying our hands on, like the Anacondas, the Cayman, the Fair to Lance. We're remote. We are a long way from any medical attention, from any rescue. Everybody's got to be sharp. Everybody's got to be on their toes. They finally arrive at Blackwater Lake. But this pristine paradise is no longer untouched. You know, the whole point was to get remote. We've been at this five days. And then we see fishermen. My heart just dropped. No, 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 no. The problem is they say they, they protect this lake and they don't they don't let anybody in. They don't want anybody here. So is this is this a situation that could get ugly? Yeah. The fishermen won't let the python hunters pass, but the guys haven't come this far to turn tail. Can't be too bad, there's two little kids there. It's getting loud up there. Look at him. You know, I don't even know if Sean was speaking Spanish to those guys, but whatever he did got us through. I don't know what we would have done if uh, the gatekeepers didn't let us into the lake. The, uh, it cost us a little bit of money. We might have to put put a couple of them But well, one of the issues was they've got this legend. They think we're skin healers. Yeah. What's that? There's this legend from 50, 60 years ago. The white man came down the river and they they you know took the skins and the fat and they used them and the locals and used them for oil and stuff. And I run into it a lot. It's very real to them. And, uh, you know, first they were a little bit scared, a little bit, you know, they, you saw them like, no, no, no. So we could? Yeah, we're good. And a little bit of, you know, I swear I'm not a skin peeler, and a little bit of worrying. That's, that's pretty funny, because they think of us as skin peelers, and I always think about, you know, headhunters from way back, and head shrinkers and stuff. So I guess it goes both ways. You're the monster here, brother. <laughs> Yeah, well. All right, let's get going. We're in. Go. Never seen so many fish. I've never seen fish in here like this. That's not a good sign. I don't care how many times I'm here. I love this place. They finally reached the lake Sean's been bragging about for years. Their goal is to find anaconda, but these waters are chock full of lethal predators, and they come alive at night. Motor. Yeah, there's one right in there. Two of them right in there. Get it on the came in, came in, came in. No, 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 screw the came in, anaconda. Where? Where? <sighs> right here, right here. Oh, look at that. You see? Look, look, look. Oh, oh man. It is crusted mud, I don't even think you can see me. Green anaconda, the largest boa on the planet. This anaconda's eyes are clouded over because it's in the process of shedding. So maybe we can handle it without getting bit. I don't think he has any clue we're here yet. We keep saying he, this could be a she. Look around for smaller males. Female anacondas can grow up to nine meters and weigh nearly 230 kilos. Males can grow as long, but generally weigh less. Anacondas are usually solitary creatures. But well, once those females start emitting those pheromones, man, the males come crawling to breed. Yeah, well, that's only if there are any left after the fishermen have uh, caught them in their nets. I don't even care to disturb this animal too much, but I got to lay my hands on it. 
just uh, to say I've laid my hands on an anaconda here in Peru. All right. Just gently touch this animal. Wow. Holy cow, look at the mosquitoes on my leg. My god. Uh-oh, oh, oh, oh. watch it, watch, 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 watch. The ground shakes as she moves. It's the yucca mama. <laughs> the yucca mama, the mother of the waters. Get out, yep. Yeah. She's pretty laid back. She's got a lot of scars. Look at her. She's got some battle wounds. Are you kidding me? In here with all these caiman? She's got good weight, though. It's fair fair weight for a while. Male, female? Uh, take a look. The yucca mama. The world's largest boa species. It's kind of hard to invert one of these. Ooh, hello. Uh, nice. All right, come here. What nice. you got? Help me. Uh... No, 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 you ain't aiming that towards me. I got a good safe distance right here. Thank God. There you go. That's typical of a wild, taste. scared snake. They're going to musk and urinate and defecate all over you. Taste it. How's that taste? See, See. See let's, let's get a measure on this animal. It might even be 11 feet there. It's a good size animal. It's still I mean, 11 it's feet. Not a monster, but really it's a good nice. size animal. It's half grown. Local legend has it that the anaconda can grow to over 30 meters. But like most legends, that's never been confirmed. Largest one I've ever caught down here is 18 feet. And, you know, just really a monster. You know what? She's She's got a hard enough life out here with these black caiman. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's let her go about her business. Yeah, I'll tell you what, that's the nice thing about this. It's not a Burmese python in Florida that we have to remove. Yep. Off she goes. She's earned our respect, no doubt. Maybe we come back one day and she's the 20, 30 foot monster we're looking for. OK, fellas, good, fine. The night's still young, so let's get back to the skiff and get on it. If you're somebody who loves reptiles, this is the place to go and get wild and catch all the wildlife that we did and see everything we saw, it was just an awesome trip. Blackwater Lake serves up its first serpent, and if Sean's stories are true, there's a lot more to come. And I can only hope that the boys got a little taste of what I've been able to experience over the years, and they'll come back down with me for bigger and better adventures. Well, who pushed you down, Greg? I don't know. <laughs> just, hey, it wasn't me. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> Come on, Greg, a get little up. hand here. I got. Oh, no, no, I, 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 Give him a hand. Give him a hand. All right, man. I need to go swimming. 